this open enrollment, as long as you have Medicare A and B, you can sign up for a supplement plan at any time during the year, and it's, it'll be effective at the beginning of the next month. There are no co-pays when you go to the doctor's office with a supplement plan. So there's a couple of different ways to take your Medicare, and we're go going to be reviewing those today. Right now we're talking about <coughs> original Medicare, so Medicare A, B, the gap of that 20%, and the deductible for the hospital that you can pick up from one of these supplement plans. And the differences are on the back, it'll help you, and, and Jeff can help you um, with that as well. And also in Massachusetts, uh, sometimes people think I actually work for the state, and I don't. <laughs> but we're very lucky. In other states, these supplement plans are half of the letters of the alphabet, and they're very, very confusing. They, some of them have pre-existing conditions. In Massachusetts, there are no pre-existing conditions when it comes to Medicare, uh, when it comes to the supplement plans. And um, the premium, the design of the plan is the same from company to company to company. Don't think just because you're paying a higher premium that you're getting better coverage. You're getting, it's mandated to have exactly the same coverage. So look at these prices, you know, it's a free market, that's great. But that doesn't mean you have to pay more than you need to, okay? So I didn't know that until I was doing Shine. I had no idea. I thought, you know, whatever was the most expensive plan was probably the best plan for someone to take. And I was wrong. So it's continuous um, open enrollment. It, um, it is um, the same design. The premiums are different. So please keep that in mind and spread the word about that. I, I always get concerned about that. Let's say you need some help paying for your Part B premium, that it's really more than you can afford. Um, again, in Massachusetts, we do have a program called the Mass Health Buy-in. It's not full Mass Health. It's not full Medicaid. You do have to qualify depending on income and assets. But if you do qualify for it, um, it will pay your Part B premium for you. So that could be, you know, almost $100 back in your pocket that would help you with some other medical costs. That's something you could talk to uh, Jeff about to see if you qualify. I, I can't rattle off all those numbers. We've got a million charts for different things, so I wouldn't want to, to quote a number right now. But many people qualify for this and they don't realize it because it's kind of a little nice little hidden secret, but we're out there promoting it, and uh, it does help quite a few people. So part B, we're on page six. It, again, as I said, it does cover uh, much more preventive care now than it did before. Medicaid never really paid for an annual physical. When you, when you first join Medicare, you are entitled to a welcome to Medicare physical. And you have to take this welcome to Medicare physical within the first 12 months of when you join Medicare. If you don't take it within the first 12 months, then you have forfeited it. Again, because of the Affordable Care Act, going forward, we do have what's called the annual wellness visit. Technically, it's not an exam, but it's similar to an exam. But we'll talk about that a little bit more. There are more and more things with the preventive care, and you can see the list there. And again, you can see this very comprehensive uh, guide um, that's a handout over there. They, they were fancy printed, but they ran out of print, so we had to hit the copy machine for that. On page seven, the annual wellness visit. Again, it's not a physical exam, but it's when you meet with your primary care physician, and he or she will take your blood pressure and body mass index and those kinds of things, your weight and your height. But also it's a time for you to sit down with your doctor to go through your family medical history, your own medical history, review all the medications that you take, maybe a new list of all the providers that you go to. You know, we're very lucky. We live in the greater Boston area. We've got great hospitals all within a stone's throw. And if we don't like what we hear over here, we go over there. Sometimes we don't always keep our primary care physician in the loop. I mean, if we belong to an HMO, it's controlled that way. But if we don't, um, this is a good time to sit down, even let them know what supplements you take. You know, we see something on TV, it looks good, it lowers your cholesterol. You should really tell your doctor those supplements that you take as well. So this is the time, the annual wellness visit is when your doctor will assess all those things and sit down with you, again, um, again because of the Affordable Care Act. This is something that will happen every year. And we'll come up with a plan for the next few years of what your health care should look like. What kind of tests should you have based on your medical history and your family's medical history? Perhaps you have a history of stroke in your family. The doctor should know that. Maybe you've never mentioned it before. The doctor might say, you know, maybe I want you to have, I don't know, an MRI, whatever they do. It's an opportunity to review that, and that will get reviewed every year. So that's something new um, in Medicare 
and we're all very, very happy about that. So we're done. Yes. Is that subject to the twenty percent? Uh, no. Well, I got. I got <coughs> with it. It might not have been billed correctly. Well, on a threat of not paying a bill, I paid it. No, no, no. I mean, the doctor might not have billed it correctly. I and mean, you might want to check with them. They may have called it a physical and not an annual wellness visit. And this I, is think, I think what they do, they get you in there, and then they promote all this other stuff. And then when you come back in, they start whacking you at the 20%. Well, they're going to, they'll, they'll they, you will be charged 20% for the balance of anything that they've billed <coughs> that your doctor has ordered for you or, you know, EKGs or whatever, that kind of thing. So they do the tests, and then they recommend a, uh, right. a standard test, right? Right, right. So now you go somewhere and have the test, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's going to be, you're going to pay 20% on that, right? If it's not covered under the preventive list, yes, it would be. Well, I was under so. the umbrella of all that, and they, they charged me 20%. Right. So you well, think I should walk in and question it, or what? Yeah, I would. I mean, you, you could question it, but you, so you don't have a supplement plan. No, right? that's why I'm here. Yeah. Right. You've got to get one after that. Right, I, exactly. I, 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 was, know. I know. I felt I was blindsided. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'd come in, he recommended this, that, and the mm -hmm. other thing, which I did. And uh, what is mm -hmm. it, the cost for the, uh, you know, the test right. there? Oh, but Part B does, only, if, it, if, it's a, if it's a procedure that Part B only covers 80% versus 100%, and I don't know all the procedures that you've had or what you've had. Well, it's and supposed I, to be the regular one you got. Yeah, well, you should call them and ask them. They, they may not have billed it correctly to Medicare. That's what I'm saying. Well, I, and I don't know what I'm talking about, so it's hard to go challenge. Well, that's why you go see a shine counselor, because Jeff could help you. Would you mind going with this? Right, but you can take, you get a statement from Medicare. You get a, um, it's a uh, medical summary notice. You get it from Medicare. It, it explains to you what has been paid and what hasn't been paid and what you would owe. It actually says a column, the third, the, the, the column on the right-hand side says, you may be billed and there'll be a, a dollar figure under there. And it will say why you were billed for it. Take a look at that. And, or bring it in to an appointment with a Shine Council. He'll help you read it. They're confusing to read. But you get everything that gets billed to Medicare. You do get this Medicare summary notice. And um, if you are, if you question anything on there, there are ways to. Um, yeah, I just thought just it was a free first time, how you doing check, you know. Was it within for the first 12 months of Medicare? It did not cost me money, huh? Was it within the first 12 months of you joining it Medicare? It was right on, yeah. Well, then you should, you should challenge them. I would check so with them. I they just, may not I'm saying this for anybody else in here that might. You, right. What I'm saying is the doctor's office is sometimes the billing department makes a mistake. Okay, well, and I'll, I'll um, check it out. I would always start with that and then go from there if you don't get satisfaction from there. Because they could talk circles around me and I wouldn't know what they were talking about. Well, ask them. Yeah, okay. ask them. I would do that. So we have Medicare, yes? Real quick, um, mm -hmm. they, they send you a statement saying what they paid for and what the. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. And then all these people that, uh, you know, they say there's Medicare fraud and they're getting billed for this. That. Those people all look at their bills and say, I didn't have that done. Well, yeah, that, that's how a lot of Medicare fraud gets picked up, and there's the phone number on it to read. They don't pay attention. Well, they don't pay attention to it, and especially, you know, I mean, some people are 95 years old and they're getting these, and they, you know, I mean, everybody's getting them. They're confusing to begin with, but the information is there. So you should always, you know, start learning how to read. Just take your time and read it, um, and go through that. And our family members should be involved with it. I, I'll have, you know, the adult children of somebody that's very elderly will say, oh my God, I didn't realize, you know, he didn't have that and he doesn't have this and whatever. Well, it, it's a good thing to get your family involved. Some people don't want to bother their children, but bother, not bothering your children could really cause a lot of problems somewhere right. down the line. So, um, and again, Shine Council can help you with it, um, going through that. But just look at it. It will tell you what, you know, haven't met the deductible yet, or whatever. It will tell you that. What happens with the Medicare summary notice? So let's say you go there for whatever. You scrape your knee, get a stitch it up. It's 80%. And then you have a supplement plan. Then that payment goes to the doctor for Medicare. Then it gets billed to the uh, supplement insurance. And if for some reason the supplement didn't pay, which if Medicare pays, the supplement will pay. In Massachusetts, the doctors have to accept those two payments, and that's it, and they can't bill you for it beyond that, oh, okay? okay? All right. 
You will also get an explanation of benefits from your private insurance company. You get these all the time, even now, you know, before you're on Medicare. We all shove them in a drawer. Yeah, right. But, you know, I mean, there are millions of dollars being recouped in Medicare fraud because people will say, I never had that cardiogram. I never bought the, that scooter. I never got that wheelchair. I don't know what, it's, it's really, Florida is <laughs> unbelievable for it. Um, I mean, they just, they just open up little storefronts and then there's millions of dollars have been recovered. I mean, but somebody called up and said, I never got it. I don't even know who that doctor is. That's a, it's a real grassroots. They have, they have professionals out there trying to so solve the problems with it. It's the grassroots one that we really want to get noticed because you know that you didn't go to Dr. Smith. Right. Who's Dr. Smith? Sometimes it's the anesthesiologist, so you weren't awake when you saw Dr. Smith. But yeah. on the other hand, you know, but so you ask the question. So you ask the question, what, what happens if you get the answer and it's a satisfactory answer? That's fine. Otherwise, maybe it's something that should be reported. So never hesitate to do this 800 number right on the Medicare form. So we talked about the health care coverage with Medicare, and the next thing is the drug coverage. Again, we're talking traditional Medicare. You have Medicare A, B, perhaps you've selected a supplement plan from this list, so you don't have to worry about that 20% uh, the deductible when you go into the hospital. But you still need your prescriptions covered. Up until 2006, we did not have a standalone, we didn't have any prescription coverage under Medicare. There were some very expensive plans out there, Medix Gold and things like that. They're about $700 a month. A few people uh, still have those. They don't sell those anymore. But there really wasn't any prescription coverage. In 2006, Medicare added that. That was the biggest addition to Medicare since Medicare started in 1965. I remember when Medicare started in 1965. My first job, I was a billing Medicare. It has changed a lot since then in terms of the volume and the complication. But anyway, um, so it's, this was good news that we had this prescription drug plan. As is typical with, you know, insurance plans and Medicare, whatever, they, they opened it up to 48 different companies. So, um, but then they also designed a great website that helps us find that the right plan for you. The good news is we're now down to 30 different plans instead of 48 plans. Um, you like to have choice, but you don't need that much choice. But the Medicare Part D prescription drug plan technically is a voluntary program under Medicare. You do not have to take it. However, I caution you, if you don't take it, and then two years down the road, you say, oh, now I've got two, three, four prescriptions, and they're all brand name, they're getting expensive. I want to sign up for a plan. You will receive a penalty of 1% per month for every month you should have been on a Part D plan and weren't on one. And that's a permanent lifetime penalty. It's based on the average premium of about $33 and change. Um, so there are a couple of plans that are low. There's a plan that's only $15 a month for a premium this year. Um, that might be a plan if you're only taking one or two drugs. Maybe you don't take any, but you don't want to take, pick up that penalty somewhere down the line. You can also decide not to take it. I just want you to be aware of the fact that there is a penalty that goes along with that if you don't take it. Okay. So the Part D plan, and this is where Medicare gets really confusing in terms of selecting the Part D plan. The best way to select your Part D plan is um, if you're good with a computer, you can go to the Medicare.gov website yourself and you'll see something that says compare plans. You'll put your whole list of medications in the plan finder, which is what it's commonly called, and the Shine Council can help you with that. And we can give you a report with three plans to look at and that include all your drugs. You want to find a plan that covers all your drugs, otherwise it's not going to do you any good at all, and you'll still be paying too much, but maybe you can, you can avoid it. <laughs> and you can look at that report, and one of the lines in that report is the lowest estimated annual cost. So at least you're looking at apples to apples to apples. And what's included in that is the monthly premium, the copay every time you go to the pharmacy, a deductible if there is one with the plan, not all plans have deductibles. The deductibles range anywhere from zero to $320 for an annual deductible with your drug plan. That, um, that annual deductible is up $10 for the year 2012. It was $310 for this year. 
Um, but you sometimes a plan with a deductible at the end of the year, say,